And now for our first feature interview for the Ultimate Movies broadcast show. I am honored to be joined by Canadian author Peggy Diamond Levy. A few years ago, we met at a local meet and greet, and she's written a few film related books in addition to other biographies and fiction for young adults. Today, as author of Mary Pickford, Canada's Silent Siren, America's Sweetheart, she'll help us better understand who Mary was and how she helped shape the future of the film industry. Sometimes a person's destiny is just meant to be, you know, at the right time, at the right place, born under the right star in the universe. In the world of early cinema, Toronto, Canada's Mary Pickford star shone a bright path to her future almost from the beginning. Her journey began with a providence of coincidence, when as a young girl her family boarded a stage manager of a theatre company in their home. Not much later she would be on the stage, and then on her way to a spectacular Hollywood career she could never have imagined in her wildest dream. Hi Peggy, welcome to the Ultimate Movies broadcast show. I'm honoured to have you as our very first feature guest. Oh, well, thank you for inviting me, Lorraine. It, it's my honour. I had a great day yesterday. I presented Mary Pickford to the retired women's teachers of Ontario, uh, the Trenton branch, and I had a, a wonderful afternoon, and I showed her movie, The New York Hat, which is always a hit. Mary, it was made by Biograph in 1912 when Mary was 20, and a good demonstration of, of the way she was able to uh, emote, you know, uh -huh. uh, using subtle body language and just, yeah, it's always a hit. I try to show it whenever I present, uh, do a presentation on Mary because it's, it's short, and uh, but um, it's fun. It, it's, the people get a laugh out of it, too. It's a good introduction to her. Yes, it is, yeah. yeah. She's very young and still at that age where she's, you know, very beautiful and <laughs> Has a great sense of fun. Yes, it does. Yeah. Lionel Barrymore is in it with her. Oh, yes. And Lillian Gish, although I haven't ever been able to pick out Lillian Gish. She plays one of the shop women, and I just qu can't quite identify her. Th that was sort of very early on in Gish's own career. Yes, it yes. was. Yes. And her brother, um, Jack Pickford, was in it too, playing oh. a youth. And it's so wonderful to be talking about Canada's first international cinema star, Mary Pickford. To begin, after a number of difficult years touring with plays, with her whole family working to keep body and soul together, Mary decided on a make-or-break for Broadway. She was an actress who wanted to start at the top, with Broadway top producer David Belasco, and she felt that to be an actress she had to be on the stage. But while on tour in Chicago, she discovered flickers and looked down on them. How did Mary's life change then, also with the influence of her mother? Well, her mother, um, Charlotte, had, had suggested to Mary that perhaps she would like to go and uh, try her luck at the Biograph Studios and get into the movies. Well, as you say, she, she looked down on the movies. She was an actress, a Belasco actress, and she thought that, they, that the Flickers' uh, moving pictures were beneath her. But Charlotte convinced her that she could make a quick $5 a day, so she agreed to go and... Uh, Indeed, she got on with Biograph. In fact, she made a hundred short pictures with them in that year between 1909 and 1910 when she was uh, with them. It was also a way of keeping the family together. If she got into the flickers, the, the whole family could stay in New York City and not have to go home. They didn't want to be separated as a family either. Never. By 1912, Mary thought she was being passed over in roles in short films perhaps because of her age, but she was still young then. But regarding feature films, what happened in her career when moving on to famous players and some very early famous silent films? Well, I think famous players was probably the best uh, move that was ever made. Adolf Zukor was making feature-length films, and he had seen Mary in uh, a Belasco production on stage, and so he wanted to do that same show, uh, A Good Little Devil, uh, on the screen, and so he gave Mary a contract to sign, and yes, yeah, she, she described her years with famous players as the happiest years of her life. And was it with famous players uh, through Zucker that she had also um, made a deal that, that she did want to earn a little more money? Yes. Well, he, she was always doing that. Even uh. back in her biograph days, she wasn't happy with what D.W. Griffin had offered her and, uh, uh, you know, insisted on being paid more. He gave in to her, and the same with Zucor. And then, from this point on, like, Mary's fame grew, and she was considered to be an international personality, one of the world's first film superstars. What do you think was her special appeal as an actress? 
Well, the the audience has just loved the feisty little independent tomboy that she always played, Little Mary. That, that's what she made her, her name on in the beginning. But I think it was also the fact that she had somehow or other mastered the act of uh, her expressions, uh, you know, beautiful facial expressions, she emoted, and she convinced D.W. Griffith that she didn't need those exaggerated gestures that they used to use on stage because the audience was so much closer to the stars uh, on screen, and so they could, you know, they had to tone everything down a little bit. So Mary then was quite a, a an instinctive actress. Like she had that talent. She was born she with did. it. Yeah. She did. Eventually, um, as she grew in her career and expanded her horizons, how and why did Mary and the others form United Artists? Well, they'd heard rumors that a number of the studios were going to join forces, and she thought at that point that it would probably mean that there would be only one or two studios that, that to negotiate with. So they decided, this group of uh, top actors, that they were going to get together and they would form their own company, an own production company, and that was United Artists that was, they had control, total control out of all, over all their pictures, including distribution, mm -hmm. so they could sort of cut out the middleman. And now, so the, the others that formed uh, United Artists, there was, there was Mary, uh, Charlie Douglas Chaplin, Fairbanks, senior. Uh huh. Uh, D. W. Griffith. He had left uh, Biograph by that time too. William S. Hart and Charlie Chaplin. So, and uh, forming United Artists, this would like also guarantee that uh, their own films, whether they were producing or acting in them, that they would eventually get into the theaters. Exactly. Yeah. Now, regarding Mary's personal life. Um, how did the marriage of Marion Douglas Fairbanks Sr. affect their popularity and their careers? Now, they eventually became viewed as the world's first super couple, finding that they were famous the world over, but getting, getting, to, their marriages, uh, getting to their marriage was a little bit uh, roundabout and difficult because they were both originally married to other people. Right, and Mary was very leery of uh, divorcing Owen Moore and, and marrying Douglas Fairbanks because in those days divorce was really frowned upon and so she thought she you know her fans would no longer uh, flock to her movies if she were sort of a tainted lady but it didn't turn out that way at all indeed Douglas uh, Fairbanks senior and Mary Pickford became Hollywood royalty mm -hmm. uh, everywhere they went they were mobbed by frenzied fans uh, so it, it, it turned out to be a good thing America's sweetheart had married everybody's oh. favorite screen star. That's right. Douglas was famous, yeah. too, because of his swashbuckling roles. And, yes, he was very well-known and very well-loved, too. And that's sort of like because everybody loves a, a love story. Yes. A and theirs was one of the grandest, like when they were, they were both at the top of their careers, basically. Mm -hmm. Now, after marriage to uh, Douglas Fairbanks Sr., Mary... Uh, married Buddy Rogers, and how do you think that that marriage compared to the the Fairbank Senior one? Like, was one or the other of more benefit to her personally or professionally? Well, I think probably her her marriage to Douglas Fair, Fairbanks was uh, probably helped her most uh, in her profession. They, you know, they formed their own studio, and yeah, you know, they were just internationally famous. But I think her marriage to band leader. Buddy Rogers, who was so much younger than she was, it was sort of, he adored her, he sort of worshipped her, and he supported her in everything she did right up until the end of her life. So I think that was, they were quite different marriages. And they had actually met early on um, in, their, in, her, in Mary's film career, uh, in, in, in an early silent, I can't remember the name of it off the top oh, of my head. My, uh, my Best Girl. My Best Girl, right. So I'm just wondering if back then either of them had an inkling of what, what might be in their futures. Well, I guess that's when Buddy, he admitted afterwards, that's when he fell in love with her. Oh. It was way back then, in, uh, 1927. How did Mary's humanity express itself during her career? Uh, she cared for her co-stars and even extras. Uh, there was that story of the young uh, girl sitting on the curb outside the studio while Mary was working. I believe the little girl's mother was a, a wardrobe, worked in wardrobe? Or? Yes, and uh, Mary had seen her sitting there for 
more than one day and, and, and waiting and wondered what was going on and discovered that the mom was um, employed right there in the, uh, in the studio. And so she went and spoke to Douglas about it. Could he possibly find something for her to do? And so that he, he did. And, and uh, so the little girl was able to, to work with Douglas and uh, not be just sitting around. She wasn't abused in any way, but it just bothered Mary that this child was sitting there waiting for hours. And, and she ended up with a part in a film. Yes, yeah, she did. <laughs> <laughs> How did Mary come about to start the Motion Picture Relief Fund? Well, she started that because she felt the need to, to that not a, every actor was as well off as she was. And so one day she came into the studio and she they say she took a hammer and a nail and she nailed a tin can on the wall of the studio and asked people to drop in their loose change. It became the Motion Picture Relief Fund for needy actors. Mm -hmm. And then eventually that expanded to having um, a certain amount deducted from yes, paychecks? Yes, uh, yeah, it became a payroll deduction plan. Mm -hmm. And then d did this eventually spread to other studios as well? Yes, yeah. yes it did. And also, although um, Mary ultimately became known as America's sweetheart, she remained a loyal Canadian. What's the story about the new Canadian flag and pick fair? Oh, well, when the, the Maple Leaf came into uh, being as Canada's flag, Mary went to the embassy in La the Canadian embassy in Los Angeles and, to ask for a flag because she remained a staunch uh, Canadian citizen. So she ran it up the uh, flagpole at Pick Fair. Now by that time, of course, she was she was not uh, married to Douglas, but she still she remained in that house until the very end with her Canadian flag flying. And was she still a Canadian citizen then, or did she yes, have dual she citizenship? Uh, an American citizen by marriage, but she was still a Canadian citizen. So in, in many ways, Mary's drive to succeed as an actress and in business became her legacy to women at that time, and she remains to this day as a fine example and an inspiration to do and be their best personally and professionally. Do you think this cost Mary privately? Uh, she did have a drinking problem at one point. Yes, I think she probably sacrificed a lot uh, early on especially. She only went to school for maybe a few weeks when they were still living in Toronto, so she had no education. Her mother taught the children what they what she could. So yeah, I think she gave up a lot of things, and then she didn't have a family until she was married to Buddy and they adopted two children. And yes, when it comes to the drinking problem, she finally succumbed to the alcohol alcoholism that you know was the curse of her whole family. And a lot of actors in those days, it just seemed to be an occupational hazard. There must have been a, like a lot of stress, especially for Mary to handle with everything that she was involved in, like United Artists at that time? or Yes, and she, um, she also tried to look after her brother and her sister. They were both actors, but they, they too were heavy drinkers, and Jack Pickford was getting, always getting in one scrape after another. She helped him find work in, in the films, but... Yeah, it, it was a real struggle for her, so I can see it, why it took its toll in the end. Yeah, and you can only do so much. I mean, you can give your family a helping hand, but, you know, it's what they do with their lives afterwards. Like, you can't be your, you know, your brother's keeper forever. No, you can't. Yeah. What was her involvement in co-founding Ampus? I think there were like 30 other members as well. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences in 1927. Uh, uh -huh. Her husband, Douglas Fairbanks Sr., was its first president. Mary was one of the founders. And this would eventually set up, like, for the awards, the Academy Awards ceremony in the future? Yes, and... that wasn't the original intention. It was mm -hmm. sort of, you know, Mary called it the United Nations of, of uh, <laughs> filmmaking and the actors and directors and producers and that, you know, to help talk about the things that were going on. But now the focus seems to be largely the Academy Awards, the Oscars. Right. And Mary won two herself. She won one in 19... 30 for Coquette, her first talking picture, as the first woman act, female actress uh, in a motion picture. And she won a Lifetime Achievement Award much later on, just right. a couple of years before she died. And, and that's the one where they had filmed it at her home, uh, yes. receiving the award. After uh, all you had come to learn about Mary Pickford's life and career, are there any things that especially stood out for you or any preconceptions you had about her that changed? Because you, you came into writing the book like as a, as a blank slate, so you had no preconceived notions about her? Or... 
No, I didn't. I knew very little about her. So yes, that was a blank slate. That's true. I think the things that really stood out for me were I had had no idea how hard that the life of a family who were doing the barnstorming, you know, riding the rails all across the country, crisscrossing the United States and coming up into Canada, what a hard life that was because so many of these were just one night stands and then they'd have to jump on the train to get to the next spot. And this was the whole family doing it. You know, all that for $20 a week. Yeah, that was really difficult. And then I think, too, um, when I learned that Mary Pickford had actually been one of the founders of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, that I was, you know, quite impressed about that, too. She certainly had this drive to succeed and, and to stretch herself and to, to do the best that she could for herself as well and, and her family. Like yeah. th- Those were tough times that you spoke of. And to come from that point in her life and then to what she eventually achieved and became, it's like staggering to think of, of her achievements. So um, she deserves a- a- every recognition, I think, that she ever received. Mm, and she never mm. lost sight of the poverty and, and the struggles that had as a young girl. That was always, she always remembered that. And uh, so this brings us to the, to the conclusion of the Mary Pickford portion of our interview, Peggy. Thank you so much for such a fascinating look into the private and Hollywood life of Canada's sweetheart. Well, thank you very much, Lorraine. Um, I don't think Canada will soon forget Mary Pickford. Uh, she was a trailblazer, wasn't she? Canada's oh, yes. golden girl. Yeah, she'll never be forgotten. No. Bye for now, Peggy. Thank Bye-bye. you very much once again. Thank you. Bye now.